Would anyone like to do the starting prayer for today's session? Thank you, Jesus. Okay, praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. For this wonderful day that you've given to us. Lord, we thank you for this time that we have gathered here to spend with your word. Lord, you teach us, you guide us, you reveal to us. Let it be everything of you and nothing of our own. Help us, O oh Lord Jesus, to focus on you, to have a single eye, <coughs> to be single-minded, to keep our focus and our attention always on you and on your word. I thank you, above Father, for this wonderful day that you've given to us. And I believe, Lord, that in this day we can make you our priority. Keep you, make you the first place of our life. And Lord, I command every spirit of distraction in this session to come out right now in the name of Jesus. And I lose that we are anointed to study your word, to come here with one accord and to learn more about you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Praise God. Yeah. Let's go to Philippines. Philippines. Chapter 3. Philippines. 3 was 13. See this. Brethren, I count. Okay, would anyone like to read? Yes. Brethren, I count not myself. To I have appeared, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those. This things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Okay, now see this. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing or many things? One thing. So how many things is Paul doing? Many things or one thing? One thing. How many things are we doing? Many things. Many things, right? We are focused on many other things. But here Paul is saying he does one thing. Now what, what why why is this word one thing so important? Sorry, can you repeat your question please? Why is this one thing so important? I came to the scripture just to show you this one thing that Paul is doing. Why is it so important? To be single-minded, to have focus on God. Okay. Let's see from another scripture in the Bible. What he says about one things and many things. It's in Matthew chapter 6, verse 22. See this. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of. <coughs> Light. Light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. Now when I read this, I did not understand what it meant. 
Did anyone else understand what it meant? Why is Jesus saying this? The light of the body is the eye. So how, how are my eyes bringing light to the body? How does it all work? I don't understand. But then, as I started to study, this is after I came to Christ. After I came to the word of God. When I would read this, I did not understand. But then the Holy Spirit began to reveal to me and show me that he, when he's saying this I, he's talking about our focus. What is he talking about? About our focus. You see in the Bible, Paul is saying 2 Corinthians 4.18, while we Look not at things which are seen. What does that mean? We don't focus. If you see the word looking, I, what does it mean? Focus. The Bible says, look upon Jesus. Look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. What is that looking unto Jesus? Taking a picture and looking at it? picture of Jesus or a statue of Jesus and looking at it, day and night. Okay, focus, on it. focus. The Bible says, do not allow this word of God to depart from your eyes. What does that mean? Taking the Bible, the book and putting it on our eyes? No. He's talking about our focus. Don't let the word of God depart your focus. And that's what he's speaking over here. Now, here he's talking about the single eye, I be single, and the evil eye, I be evil. What is this? Paul is saying, I only focus on one thing, not many things. Right? He is focused. Example, when the doctor, do they use a laser? Yes. What does the laser do? Is it very powerful? Yes. Why is it so powerful? It is powerful because the laser can penetrate through any structure to get the result. That is why the laser is so powerful. Because the light of the laser is focused. You see, when you're sitting in a room, Sister Selena, for an example, Angelica, when you're sitting in a room, is there a light in that room? Yes. yes. But is that light spread everywhere? Is it uh, shining everywhere or only in one place? Focus. Shining everywhere. Yeah, shining everywhere. Anyway. And so in the same way, the, for, the laser is also just a light like that. The only difference is it is focused. So today, uh, we have to ask ourselves, are we focused? And when we are focused on the word of God, see, we cannot be focused on two things or more. We can only be focused on one thing at a time. When you use a microscope and you want to look into something and you focus on that, can you look, at two, can you look into two things at one time? Or do you focus only on one object? Uh, and what do you do? You focus in on that object. You focus in. In other words, and, and then you reach the point where now you focus. Now you have to find focus. So in the same way, in the word of God, according to the Bible, he's, Jesus is talking and he's saying, our focus should be single. Our focus should be on one thing. <coughs> this, a person can experience the fullness of God, the fullness of God's light in his life when his focus is single. What is Paul's focus? He is focused on one thing, not many things. I do one thing. Paul's focus is single. 
That's the key. My focus is the key. That's why the Bible says, a double-minded man will not receive anything of the Lord. Why? A double-minded man is having an evil eye. Now, we think that I be single is a person who, you know, agrees with the word, lives like Jesus, does what Jesus did. A person with an evil eye is like an alcoholic, drug addict, you know, a person who has suicidal thoughts, a person who is living a, a murderer, correct? That's what we used to think before. Single eye, evil eye. Okay, when I said I would never understand it, I would never understand this. The thought used to come, maybe the single eye is just, you know, people who are in the word, holy, holy, like the priest, the person, the pastor, the preacher, and the eye evil is the one who's in, uh, committing sin, adultery. That's what it probably means. But a person can be in the word of God. A person can believe in Jesus. But that person can still be evil eye. Still have an evil eye. A person can be in the world and can have an evil eye. But a person can be in the world and have a single eye. Now, now what does it mean to have a single eye? What it means to have a single eye is focusing on only one thing. See, in the world we are living in today, we are bombarded with knowledge from everywhere. Is that right? You yes. go on the... At, that, at the time of our ancestors, did they have the internet? No. So no. were they even... Were they even, you know, like uh, doubting the word? Or did they know that there is a God? Did they know that there is Jesus? And did they believe in Jesus? Right? They knew and believed. Maybe, maybe not the way we believe, not the way we believe now with the promise. But of course, they would never have a doubt. Is Jesus really the Son of God? Do you think yes. they would ever have the doubt? What? What? If their heart, uh, if I would have to compare, I would compare it to a heart of a child who is told uh, Jesus is. <laughs> Lord God Savior and they received it without questioning. Without questioning? You know why? They were not bombarded with the knowledge that we are bombarded with. Did they have internet? No. Did they have Google? No. The only way they could get information is when they're going, they're crossing the road or they're walking on the road and they meet one of their friend and their friend speaks to them. Or if they read the newspaper. Right? That's the only way they could get, you know, uh, knowledge. Not even the TV. Correct? Yes. So, they did not get bombarded with knowledge. That's why you see, they not, they never doubted. Is there really, is there a really God? Who's the real God? Is Jesus the real God? Is he the real God? They never mm -hmm. doubted. The reason why our eye is not single is because there is so much knowledge that we are bombarded with so that now rather than keeping my focus on the word of God, my focus is distracted from the word onto the knowledge of the world. Isn't this what, happen isn't this what is happening? Yes. Evil eye means a double mind. And today the reason why we have evil eye is because we hear knowledge, we hear understanding, we hear things from the world. You know who is a person who has an evil eye? A person who has an evil eye will never be able to depend on God as their father. You know why? Because the Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. But what happens is when an evil eye, when a person is evil eye, 
He's bombarded with the knowledge of this world. Now he is no longer leaning on trusting in the Lord, leaning on God, but now he's trusting in and railing on, on his own knowledge, on his own understanding. And that is the reason why he has an evil eye. Now he doesn't depend on God. He doesn't depend on his word. Rather, he depends on his own strength and on, and, and on his own ability. Right? So an evil eye is a person who's dependent always on his own ability. <coughs> a person with a single eye is a person who's de dependent completely on God as his source. He is not doubting. He is not wavering. He is not like a, uh, you know, when you see, he's, you know, have you seen some people, one day they believe that Jesus will heal them. The second day they believe Jesus has already healed them. The third day they believe that uh, it is not God's will for me to be healed. Then the fourth day, again, they believe that Jesus has healed me. Then the fifth day, Jesus will not heal me. The sixth day, because it is not my will. Now, are they strong or are they wavering? Wavering. 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 Why are they wavering? Because their trust in God is not constant. Yeah. You know how it is? A person is driving a car. Today he's driving on the right side of the road. Then he's driving on the side of the opposite direction. What is going to happen to him? If he's, if he's driving this way and all the cars are coming this way, what is going to happen to him? Crash. One day he's in this lane, the other day he's in that lane. One day he's in the right lane where he's going, the other day he's in the right lane where he's going against the traffic that is coming. It's not going to work. So can I just wave one side and this side, one side and that side? That's why Jesus goes on to say in verse 24, no man can serve two masters. No man can, you know, be in two kingdoms. No man can, you know, uh, put half of himself in this kingdom and half of himself in that kingdom. Either you're in the kingdom of God or you're in the kingdom of darkness. An evil eye has so many things to focus on. And one of the classic examples for this is Martha and Mary. <coughs> How many of you have heard of Martha and Mary? Who is good? Who is better? Mary. 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 No, Martha. Martha is better, right? No. She's a doer of the word. Come on. She's doing the word. Mary is only listening. But Martha is a doer of the word. So who's right? No. She's, Mary kept her eyes on Jesus. And what did Martha do? But Martha is cooking. If she doesn't cook, then who will be Jesus and the disciples? <laughs> right? Mary is the real doer of the word. Because the focus is on Jesus. Mary is lazy. Martha is doing. And then on top of that, you're saying Mary is doer of the word and Martha is lazy? Martha is focused on works. And Mary is focused on what? You said, she's yes. doer. You said Mary is a doer of the word. That means she's also focused on works. Focused on listening the word of God. Okay. Correct. Now, you see, Martha and Mary, they were both serving two masters. I mean, Ma Martha was focused on serving two masters. Mary was only focused on serving Jesus. And you know how she was serving Jesus? She was listening to the word. That's all she had to do. How she was serving Jesus was she was listening. She was yielding. She was submitting herself to Jesus. But Martha, on the other hand, she was distracted. She was, the Bible says she was distracted by much serving. She also served Jesus. But the difference between Mary and Martha is 
Mary allowed Jesus to serve her. Martha did not allow Jesus to serve her. Rather, she thought, I have to serve Jesus. See, in verse 24, we see no man can serve two masters. This is a continuation of verse 23. Because a person who's trying to serve two masters is a person who has an evil eye. He's divided. He, his focus is divided. You see, I would say one thing that destroys many people is divided vision. You see, in the church, one person wants to be... One person wants to do it like this. Another person wants to do it like this. Then the third person says, no, I want to do it like this. What is that? Are they one or are they divided? Divided. Why did the early church experience so much manifestation in their lives? Because, they are because God had chosen the early church. God is not choosing us now. No. They were in one accord. Yeah. They were in one accord. Correct. You see, in the early church, it was no, it was not about an individual. It was not about a person. It was not about he, she, the preacher, the pastor. It was all about Jesus, and it was allow about Jesus alone. They served only one master. They did only one thing. The eye was single. And because their eye was single, we see in the Bible, they experienced so much manifestation. Manifestation that many a times we struggle to see. Why? They were like-minded. They were in one accord. They agreed with each other. They came into agreement with the word. When the Bible says agreement prayer, what we think is, we think I go and I ask somebody to pray for me and to agree with me. You know, when we studied about agreement prayer, before people used to ask, pray for me. Now what people is ask, uh, instead of that is, can you agree with me? Can you make the prayer and I will agree with you? Right? <coughs> you know what is agreement prayer? Because we, we, we understood what agreement is, but we did not understand what prayer is. We are thinking prayer is I have to talk to God, but we don't understand prayer is a two-way communication where I talk to God and he talks to me. Hallelujah. So you know what is agreement prayer? Agreement prayer is coming into agreement with what God said to me in his word. That's agreement prayer. Hallelujah. It's not only about me talking to God, but it's God talking to me. And when God speaks to me, not in the audible voice, but when he speaks to me through his word, I come into agreement with that word. And that's why we say, you don't have to do agreement prayer with only some people, a person. You can do it with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is always going to come in agreement with you if you are in agreement with the word. Hallelujah. 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 And now when you come into agreement with the word of God, now you're not doing many things like Martha is doing, but you're only doing one thing like Paul is doing, like Mary is doing. One thing. And you know what is that one thing? Keeping my focus on God. Did Jesus experience lack when there were more than 5,000 people, but there were only five loaves and two fishes? Did he experience lack? <coughs> He did. The attack of Satan was coming saying, you're going to lack. But did he agree with the lack? No. Yeah. He did not allow it to come. See, we think, come to Jesus and all your problems will be solved. You'll no longer have any problems. No, no, no. When you come to Jesus, problems will still attack. The lack still attack to Jesus. Problems will still attack you. But when you have the word of God, you are going to use the word of God against that problem and never allow it to come into your life. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So ask yourself today, am I single eye or am I evil eye? When you have single eye, you're always going to be in agreement with the word. 
How did we know that Jesus was single eye in the midst of the lap? He looked up to heaven and thank God. Thank he looked up to heaven and thank God. Thank okay. God. There is another word used. He looked up Praise to heaven God. and he praised God. Praise God. Okay. He looked up to heaven and he blessed. Blessed God. That means what? That means his focus is on God no matter what comes. His single eye. That's why he looked up to heaven and then he blessed the loaves. He looked up to heaven. He praised God. He blessed the loaves. The Bible says. And he gave it to his disciples to give it to the people. Now. Abraham, where did God tell him to look? Because see, as I told you, whenever the Bible says the word look, it means our focus. Look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Now, where did Abraham look? Where did God tell him to look? After the stars. And told him to count the stars. Why did God tell him to count the stars? Because when you count stars, you get children. So next time a childless couple comes to you and says, no, I don't have any children. You tell them, go and count the stars, you'll get children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll let somebody else answer this. Is that right? No. Why no? You're right. It's not correct. But why is it not correct? Uh, God, yes, God is reminding him the father of all nations. Exactly. He's reminding him that he is the father of many nations. Why did God tell him to look at the stars? Not that if you look at the stars, you'll get children. But to change his imagination from being a childless father to being the father of many nations where he has countless children. So what is God doing? Changing Abraham's vision from evil eye to single eye. <coughs> How many times have you experienced when you go through a situation, you are reminded of that word that you learned before, correct? No. Let's say you learned by the wounds of Jesus I mean. Then suddenly when sickness came, now, when the sickness came, you remembered, oh, by the wounds of Jesus, I'm healed. Right? Yes. Hello, yes or no? Yes. No. Now, when you remembered that by the wounds of Jesus, I'm healed, you know, it is the Holy Spirit reminding you of that scripture so that you can take the scripture and make your eyes single. You can take the scripture, keep your focus on that scripture. In other words, Keep your focus single and not evil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why the promises have been given. So that now when I take the promises, when I begin to agree with the promises, that's when I'm tapping into what God has promised for me in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just write down. Just write down. The Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says that I, that I, that I should have a single eye. That I should have a single eye. That I should have a single eye. That means. That means. That 
that means keeping my focus keeping my focus only on one thing only on one thing that is the word of god that is the word of god hallelujah that is the word of god hallelujah any questions any doubts thank you jesus praise god praise god there's no question or doubt but i'd like to share something like a joke yes okay so once there was this man okay now here is the kingdom of uh, god and here is the kingdom of darkness mm -hmm. okay and between the two kingdoms there is uh, a fence okay so the man says i am neither completely in the kingdom of darkness neither completely kingdom of god neither completely kingdom of darkness i am on the fence okay then the satan comes and tells him even that fence is mine yeah that's how it is that's, that's how, how it is, is right? you have to be completely on the other side otherwise nothing on the fence in yeah. the kingdom of god you know there used to be one boy who used to give this example whenever he he would take the scripture he would say it's like when you see in the indian movies one man standing on two jeeps yeah that's how it is <laughs> i mean what kingdom whereas i'm in the other kingdom i put my legs on both yeah. praise god praise god anyone else any questions praise god okay so today we'll make a prayer for all those people who have a divided focus whose eye is evil we'll make a prayer for them so that they are able to keep their eye single or based on the word thank you lord thank you above father thank you jesus thank you holy spirit lord we understand how important it is to keep our eye make our eye single to have a single eye and so lord i believe that everyone who is in the session or who will watch it later on youtube or facebook lord i command every demonic spirit of divided focus to come out right now in the name of jesus i believe lord that you are helping us to have a single eye and to always keep our focus on you and lord i believe that we are anointed that we are blessed by your grace to study your word to meditate on your word and to look unto you because you are the author you are the finisher you are the developer of our faith we thank you above father we thank you lord jesus in the mighty and glorious name of jesus christ our lord amen Amen. 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 We pray in tongues. Thank you, Jesus. Hora bakam be bakan dere be. Amen. 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 Amen.